grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, to the Gospel text. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed Him, that would probably be a number of people who were part of the early church, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And if you will know the tr if you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, "We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free?" We as Americans love our freedom. But part of understanding freedom is to understand what freedom is not. In order to be free, you must be free from something, from slavery or prison. The Jews who had believed in him were caught up in trusting their heritage. They were slaves to their culture, thinking that that was the key to their salvation. And if you are a slave to anything but Christ, then you are not free, although you may think you are. The opposite of freedom is to be enslaved, it's to be imprisoned, and in order to understand in order to understand freedom, we must understand that being a prisoner or a slave is on the opposite end of that spectrum. Now the great deceiver has many people believing that they are free when they are still slaves. He's really good at deceiving and enslaving souls. He's been doing it for over 6,000 years. <laughs> The Jews who believed in him were trusting in their heritage, over and above God and his promises. The church in Rome during Luther's day was trusting in their heritage and tradition, over and above God and his word and his promises. Those things that are clearly spelled out in his Bible. In early America, most of which was settled by Christians seeking to live out their faith in peace, became enslaved for the most part to legalism and shame. Those became the tools that ruled the society. And they, in many cases, trusted those things above God and His promises. Freedom from the English crown meant slavery to Puritan ways. In modern America, legalism and shame have morphed into legislation and service to self. We are, in essence, a modern-day Gnostic and narcissistic society. Okay, pastor, stop using the five-dollar words. I'll explain them for you. Gnostic. Our version of Gnosticism is that that phrase you've heard before, spiritual but not religious. And narcissism is just self-service. Everything's about me. Those are the things, the guiding principles of the society that we live in. Trusting in ourselves and our things over and above God and His promises. This leads us, in this election season, to having politicians who say things like, I am against abortion, but I don't want to force my views upon others. In order to hear just how ridiculous that statement is, let's insert some other things in that same sentence. <coughs> things that are illegal. I'm against theft, but I don't want to force my opinion upon others. 
I'm against arson, but I think arsonists should be free to do whatever they wish. I'm against pedophilia, but I don't want to force my views upon others. I'm against murder, but I don't want to force my views. You see, hear how ridiculous that sounds? And abortion, the killing of unborn children, is murder. The taking of innocent life. I end with murder because that's what abortion is. And that's really what this recent HHS mandate forces people to participate in. They are making those who have religious convictions in our country participate indirectly through taxes and through their insurance fees in procedures that violate their conscience and our First Amendment. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when I came into this role, I affirmed for myself and for anyone else that you would never hear me in the pulpit preach a sermon on politics. But when politics intrudes upon religious freedom and threatens the unborn and the infirmed and seeks to redefine biblical marriage and family, we, must, like Luther, must proclaim the guiding principles in my life and in your life are found upon the God Word of God. Popes and councils may err. And in these cases, I must obey God rather than man. To go against conscience and God's word is neither right nor sane. Here I stand, I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. We as members of the body of Christ must cast our vote with this in the background informing what we do. For those who at least claim that they will be champions for the unborn, not trample on religious freedom, and work to protect the unborn and marriage from the onslaught of this amoral, narcissistic society that we are a part of. The great deliverer has us all enslaved, excuse me, the great deceiver has us all enslaved at some level. Pride, selfishness, unkindness, unwillingness to do what it is we know we should do in the public realm, addictions, laziness, dishonesty. And Jesus says to all of us, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, the Son remains forever. When you become a child of God through your baptism, you are no longer a slave, no longer a pretender to the seat of ownership, no longer a slave or a prisoner. You will remain in His care forever because if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed, says the text. Notice earlier in the text it said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. We know that He is both God and truth. And knowing Him is being set free by Him. His suffering and death on the cross served our prison sentence, redeemed us from our slave master, set us free, released, not an escapee. We do not have to run and hide, fearing recapture, fearing a slave master who no longer has a claim on us. We are now free, free from being embarrassed about doing things publicly that we know we should do, free from pride, free from unkindness, free from laziness, selfishness, addictions, dishonesty. We are free from these things. Free to serve Him in righteousness and purity. Free to enjoy 
the fruit of a life with faith in Him, free to marvel at the miracle of baptism, free to come into His presence every Sunday and eat and drink and smell and taste and touch and hear His forgiveness. The freedom He paid for through my forgiveness and yours, grace freely given to his redeemed, free to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen.